All right, guys, Jamie here, Restoration Marketing Group. Thanks for uh, joining me today. This is June 18th. And the year 2020 is halfway over our motion. It's definitely been an interesting year. I think we all could agree on, but um, not much we can do, but keep on keep on moving forward, all right? But um, so today we're going to go over the new 2020 seo formula you know there's always things changing google's always doing updates there's things that used to work that don't work anymore uh, you know google just rolled out an update in may that's kind of shaking things up a little bit so we're here to kind of um, talk about what's working now and uh, what you guys should be doing so hopefully you guys will get a lot of uh, good stuff out of this today and some of you may have been i know a lot of you uh, kind of hop on all of these that yeah, i try to do one one of these a month, um, you know, the whole Corona situation, things kind of took up. Everything had to go on pause, obviously, a little bit, just to kind of see what was going to happen. And um, But we're back at it again. going to try to do these at least once a month uh, for you guys for the rest of the year. But if you remember, if you were with us uh, back in January, um, you know, we kind of did a, an overall marketing plan, like, you know, that you should be focused on, focusing on in 2020. Um, and all the methods that we covered in that, that webinar are still relevant even post coronavirus or i mean the virus is still here obviously but the world's starting to open back up um for us and you know coronavirus or not people's houses are still going to flood they're going to you know people's houses are going to burn down unfortunately there's going to be mold that has to be removed so you know we're, we're just fortunate to be in a central services industry to where you know homeowners and are always going to and businesses are always going to need us right and even coronavirus cleaning now right could be a whole another service that you guys can add on um to help the public out and you know help you know the country out as a whole just to sanitize and disinfect you know homes and, and places of business to try to keep everybody safe but so seo is going to you know one piece to the puzzle right hopefully you guys are doing you're taking a comprehensive approach to your to your internet marketing and even on offline marketing, right? You should have multiple channels going. So that way you're getting leads from multiple, um, you know, pillars, if you will, to where if one slows down, the other one helps pick up the volume and, and hopefully your business is, is growing, you know, month over month throughout throughout the year. So today we're gonna cover, cover a few things. You know, like I mentioned, there was an update in May that's kind of shaking things up. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, spammy type things that people were doing in the past that, you know, Google obviously is, is catching on to these things, right? It's not, Google is by no means stagnant. Um, I mean, it is always evolving, you know, updating, and that's why, you know, it's, it's, you know, companies like us, especially, we have to stay on top of these things. And that way, you know, we're always getting, making sure we're getting results for our clients and, and taking them to the next level. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what's working now in SEO and how to optimize your website to make sure you're giving Google what it wants. So I know you're busy. I'm busy. Like, I don't, we're not doing this to, uh, you know, time is, you know, one of the only assets we can't get back, right? So I take that seriously. So I'm not here to waste your time. And so just, you know, I'll try to keep this short and sweet and straight to the point, right? So you can get on with your day. So just, uh, I just ask that you focus and kind of pay attention and that way you get the most out of it. And, um, you know, I think it'll, you'll get the most benefit that way if you can kind of stay focused on, on the webinar and I'll let you get back to, get back to work. But, you know, I recognize some of you on here that, you know, have joined, um, you know, that come to a lot of my webinars. So welcome back. I see a lot of new names on here as well. So welcome. And I mean, this isn't really about me, but just, um just to give you a good for all the new the new people on um you know i do some speaking on on digital marketing i do have a construction background you know grew grew up in construction what we call it for construction used to used to run uh, multi-million dollar commercial jobs uh, back in my previous life and i kind of shifted into the the online world um but it, you know our clients really appreciate it right because i've seen i've been on the, the construction side of it and i've also know the digital side of it so it kind of just helps me see things from from both angles and, and really what works for our clients and then we kind of you know got a, a handful of restoration companies uh, we're getting killer results for them so i kind of decided hey you know what that's going to be our our niche our focus we're going to become specialists 
for water damage companies, and, and that's kind of how we got to where we are today. So we, we just work with, you know, restoration companies. I mean, a lot of our clients, you know, some of them do carpet cleaning as well, or, or air testing, or, you know, some environmental stuff, um, or rebuild, or remodeling, you know, but, but they all deal with restoration in some form or fashion. Um, so that's kind of why we, why we specialize. Um, and like I said, I mean, this is all we do. This is, you know, water, fire, mold is our bread and butter. Or bread and butter. Um, and I like just to show this. This is kind of awesome. This nothing makes me. I get more. I get nothing gets me more excited than getting texts like these from clients. Um, here's some recent texts I've gotten. Even during this Corona thing, just you know, Doug, the other guy, got a fifteen thousand dollar drought, and a Zach over in Phoenix got a twelve thousand dollar mitigation job. So, you know, I was pretty pumped to hear that. We all. Everybody loves the uh, the mitigation jobs, right? That's 70, 80% margin is uh, not, not too shabby. All right, so so while we're here today, you know, does SEO still matter? You know, it's, I remember a year or two ago, I was talking, you know, I talked a lot of restoration companies, a lot of business owners, you know, Google's been changing up the SERPs or the search engine results page a lot over the past couple of years, especially the past year, they've been rolling out the local service ads, um, the paid ads are always above the SEO organic listings. Um, so a lot of people are like, man, you know, SEO doesn't matter anymore. The Google My Business stuff doesn't really matter. Like, just get pushed down the page, right? So are people really still clicking it? So that's kind of what we're here, why we're here today is to kind of talk about that to see if it still matters. And I mean, so if you research the studies and take a look, it's, it is alive and well. And it's still, and even though we see it with our clients, you know, anywhere from 60 to 75% of the business they get is still from organic SEO type listings, right? We kind of roll in the Google My Business and SEO kind of together because they kind of build upon each other, right? The the people ranking maps tend to, their websites tend to be ranking well and they kind of, um, Google can obviously read all of that and crawl, they crawl all that. Um, so th th I thought this was interesting, 71% of clicks on page one of Google go to the map, the three pack or the 10 listings on, in order in organic. You can only see the first two listings here on the screen um, down here, but these are the organic, you know, where the search engine optimization comes into play to get your website, ranking, website ranking, ideally in the top 10 results, because nobody's, I mean, just think about yourself, you know, rarely, rarely are people going to page two. Um, so you really want to be on page one and once you get on page one, you want to get to the, the top one or three listings and, I, and I'll show you why. So out of that 71% of the clicks, 67% of all clicks on page one go to the companies listed here in the three pack and the top two listed in organic. I mean, that is crazy. So over half are going to these five spots right here. And it makes sense. Like, because think about how you, when you search, are you clicking, do you click ads? I mean, some people definitely do. And that's why paid traffic is still important. Because I mean, as long as you can see an ROI, like why wouldn't you, right? You put in a dollar, you get free back. Like it's all day, every day, right? It's like going to the ATM, putting in a dollar, you get free. I mean, if you're not doing it, then um, I don't know. I would just rethink that. But you can get even ch cheaper costs per lead and ROI from the organic. And if this is where people are, you want to be there, obviously, right? 67% are going to the map pack or the top two. So it's still huge. I think because a lot of people just know that, I don't know, that once they see it's an ad and they, or they know it's an ad, they just, the tendency is to scroll past and click. I mean, this is what I do when I even, I know how this works and this is still how, when I'm doing my research or if I need a home service provider here in my town, this is still how I do it, and I know how the how the how the game works, right? So, it definitely still matters. Um, you know, I just wanted to, um, you know, to bring that point home. And I did want to show you real quick. I don't know. Oh, man, let's see how I can do this. My screen's gonna be a little finicky. Um, let's see here. This is going to be a little skewed because I, I have my, <laughs> here, let's, I think we can get the point across. All right, so this, I just want to show this, this, uh, you know, this client got 80 calls in a month, which, you know, some of you in bigger cities, you know, that's not, you know, you should be getting more of that, but 
in a medium-sized city like this is 80 calls and the water damage world's not too shabby, right? So if you look, you know, we were doing a comprehensive approach with this client, like we recommend our clients do, because there's business to be had from all the angles, right? But if you look, and I went through before this, 75% of all these leads this client got are Google My Business or organic website calls. And I mean, out of that 75%, I mean, probably 60% are Google My Business, right? That's where I put a lot of emphasis there. But as you can see, majority are Google My Business organic um, out of all of these calls that they got. 75%, right? So that's kind of, that's in line with what I was showing you guys earlier. And that, you know, you can't rely just on local service ads or pay-per-click alone. Now, should you do that for a quick ROI and, a quick, and to get leads quickly? Absolutely. But you should not sleep on or, or neglect, you know, an SEO strategy and a Google My Business strategy for your company um, moving forward. If you're looking to grow, you know, moving forward. So there's four things that have kind of recently changed is, I mean, can you still get away with duplicate content? Yes, but those, ever, we've noticed everybody that has duplicate content is sliding in the rankings compared to everybody else that has unique um, content. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Low quality backlinks, you know, four or five years ago, I mean, even a couple years ago, you, you know, people would just keyword stuff their pages and just blast spammy link to the page. And, and they used to work, right? I mean, a couple of days later, as soon as a couple of days, Google, you'd see websites pop up. But, you know, Google, the whole point of, of their whole SEO and algorithm, all that, ultimately, I believe it was to provide like, you know, results closest to what the user wants to see based on their search, right? And, and to provide the best user experience. And so they believe that the low quality spammy links, um, you know, don't lead to that, which I think we all can kind of agree on. Because uh, it always be, a, you know, people that were out there doing that were just spammy sites trying to, you know, get quick rankings. They weren't real legit local restoration businesses trying to help people lose, you know, home flooded, for example. And something else that has recently changed is, you know, you need a real physical office. Um, and we have seen some clients that, you know, they might have a PO box and, and there are some like regional virtual office services that are still working that are okay. Cause you know, a lot of our clients, if you're just starting out, you don't, you know, you don't have 10 trucks yet. Um, then you kind of need to work out of your home office, right? And we're still seeing some of those um, get by in Google, but you gotta be careful and you gotta be aware that Google is, suspending some of those um, offices and they're paying attention to it, right? Again, because people were spamming, creating just offices out of nowhere that weren't real businesses. And that's ultimately not what Google wants, right? They want to, so keep that in mind. I mean, if you, you know, if you're, if you're a large enough company, then you have a warehouse for your equipment and trucks and people. Um, so it shouldn't really be a problem. But um, I know a lot of the smaller, smaller companies are kind of, you know, just still sticking to the UPS boxes and the PO boxes. We're definitely not not recommending that if you're if you're trying to to hang you know keep the rankings around long term because if you and even if you do get by, Google can make an update and boom, your rankings go overnight. I mean, you could lose lose a huge volume of calls that used to getting. And obviously, you can see a huge dip in revenue from that. So, so just keep that in mind. And then also, this is a more recent one is site speed. You know, a lot of people don't even think about the load time of your site or some of the back end stuff on your site. Well, it's a, again, Google wants to provide a good user experience. And if it takes, and think about yourself too. I even do it. If I go to a site and it takes 20 seconds to load, I'm already off of it, gone on to the next result, right? So people whose houses flood, for example, it's, I mean, they're extremely, they're, you know, it's an emergency situation. They want to talk to a human as quick as possible. They want to tech out of their house ASAP, turn the water off, assess the situation and start getting you know the cleanup rolling so if, they, if the site if your site doesn't load fast for that end user then they're already bouncing off of it so that's why google wants to show you know sites that are loading quickly and it affects your, it affects your rankings right so they're going to reward fast sites so we'll kind of dive into these a little bit in a little more detail so you know start with number one about the du duplicate content you know, most of our clients and most companies I talk to, you know, they service anywhere from 25 to 60 um, miles around. I mean, it kind of depends on, you know, sometimes your radius, you know, will be a little larger. Um, sometimes it's, you know, depending on the size of your company, right, and how many trucks you're running. 
you know, based on where you're actually located in the city, if you don't want to deal with the traffic, and there's a lot of variables. But this is kind of sends, tends to be the average, you know, anywhere from 25 to 60 miles around their office location. Um, but, you know, one thing we've noticed over the, over the years, especially by a lot of clients that come to us that had, you know, websites built by other companies is, you know, for some of their pages, they'll just, they'll be the exact same page, but it'll have the, just like one city change. Like the only thing that'll be different is instead of saying Orlando, it'll now say, you know, Miami, that everything is identical. The content is identical. And I mean, Google can obviously read that, right? They're crawling that, they're looking at that. And so it's, it's hurting, hurting rankings. So obviously Google's smart to know that. So moving forward, keep that in mind that you want any, you can't have some of the similar stuff, right? Because you can only talk about water damage and bowl removal so many different ways, right? And, and city pages are important and we recommend you do that because obviously it's more specific to that city, but just, you know, try to keep at least around 70% of it unique. And that way Google will see that and you'll get, you know, points from a ranking factor um, on that. So number two, too many irrelevant low quality links. Um, I kind of touched on this before, but you know, it used to be you could just have like a one page site, you know, 500 words and just blast it with 400 links, right? And then you, and the, that would actually work and you could rank, right? I mean, that was back when <laughs> it was a lot easier back in those days, right? We didn't, there wasn't a, um, it was a lot easier to get ranked, right? And people were doing that, but obviously Google's adapting and picking up on stuff. And they're always re releasing the updates about this, right? And so the Penguin update um, was about, you know, quality content and relevant links right they could see like if, if people were just getting uh, you know a, a doctor's office link to a restoration uh website that make that makes no sense right they're like why why is this this site linking to this one so you, you you're not going to get points for that ranking points um for lack of a better word so you know moving forward you need to analyze your link profile and disavow any bad links that could be hurting your rankings um you know, so whatever company you currently work with, you know, just discuss that with them and, and they should be able to help you out with that. And then, I mean, as far as, you know, anchor, we're not going to get too much into the nitty gritty, but as far as your anchor text, you know, you want to, well, you want to vary it. You want to have some branded links, which is like your company name. And then you want to have like keyword anchor text, right? Like water damage restoration. You want to have that linking over to your web page. Um, from a high quality relevant source, right? So like an industry magazine would be an example of a relevant link. But you don't want to go to, you know, back in the day, people used to just use water damage, water damage, water damage, right? It's a, it's a little anchor text from all their links. Well, Google can obviously crawl that and see it. And, and they're, it, that's spammy, right? So they're, they're, I mean, Google can pick it up on it. So you want to have a lot of branded links in there too, because obviously if you search your, your company name, you want your website and your Google My Business and all your Facebook profile. You want all that to show up in Google. And then that way you, you, you kind of build like a brand fortress around your online profile. And then you start linking in with more keyword relevant anchor text from there, right? And you kind of build it out. That's, Google likes um, to see, you know, clients doing that from on their website. Okay, so number three, you want a real... Um, address like again this is the pigeon update you want to make sure you have your your address listed and we we have seen like because there's a couple ways you can set up your google my business listing you can do it as a service area business or if you have an actual physical location um you know we actually go as restoration companies you know we go to service um the homeowner even if it's a remodel right like if we're doing a remodel drive we have to go to the actual customers so you don't technically need a storefront um, but it does seem that they, those clients we've noticed tend to rank a little bit quicker and a little bit better. So, so keep that in mind if you're, um, you know, if you're setting up an office or something. Um, but man, like a lot of people that had fake, these fake addresses, UPS stores, et cetera. Um, I mean, they got, they got smacked and they got suspended. And then, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to get a Google My Business unsuspended. It's it's a nightmare, and it'll it'll not be an easy pro process. I can promise you that. So, because um, I mean, sometimes they'll even suspend. We've seen some clients come to us and they're like, man, like I have a real office that got suspended for some reason, and so we've had to help them, you know, get it unsuspended back on the back on track, right? So Google can kind of do whatever it wants. So we're kind of at the mercy of them sometimes, but that's why we want to make sure. You know, if you already have a, a web presence, you want to make sure you're giving them what they want. And if you're starting 
fresh, you want to make sure you, you start out the right way. Um, and if you do it the right way from the beginning, then you'll, you'll have nothing to, to worry about. Now, this is a big one, too, that's, you know, more, it's more recent is, is the, the site speed stuff. You know, people, you know, haven't really, they just kind of just build their site out. There's, you know, videos everywhere, you know, Im large images everywhere, and just, they just kind of slap it up. Don't really think about load time and, and all that good stuff. So this is really important. And you got to keep, in, you know, there's a desktop load speed and a mobile load speed, right? Because a lot, you know, over 50% of the traffic these days is is mobile right like I, I guarantee you like everybody on this webinar with me right now you're you know you're, you're either logged into this through your phone or your phone is, a, is within arm's reach right if and if not then you're you're the one out of everybody on here so i mean mobile you keep it you know make you want to make and not to go off topic you want to make sure you have a mobile friendly website and then, but you also want to make sure that it loads quickly on the mobile version which is extremely important so what, a good way to test this is, uh, you know, Google has a Google Page Speed Insights, and it'll allow you to test the the mobile as well as the desktop uh, load time. So that's kind of a there's a link that you guys can see um, that you guys can test your own site um, if you'd like, and just kind of see uh, where you're at as far as the load time goes. So let's see. All right, so what else has changed? Um, is, uh, you know, so we kind of went over the old-fashioned SEO, but it's not working, right? So, you know, all these these animal updates that Google, Google has rolled out, you know, the panda, the pigeon, the penguin, you know, it's all, it's all kind of shifting towards a user experience and, because Google's getting better at tracking you know, how long people are on the website, where they're clicking. I mean, Google's basically monitoring everything we're doing online, right? So they, they want an overall good user experience. If they feel like your web your website and online presence, presence is giving that to the end user, then you get rewarded for it, right? Because you're, you're giving the end user what they want, and so Google give, rewards you for that. So, you know, what are the new ranking factors? So click-through rate is one of them, right? If you show up on page one, Google can see who's clicking your website, and they can see all this in analytics. So if they're actually, if you're getting a lot of click-through rates versus your competition, then Google's like, oh man, these, these people must have something that people like on their website. Let's, you know, so that's, you know, SEO points right there. Um, you know, when they get to your website, are they actually scrolling and looking around and clicking, you know, playing any videos you have, checking out a couple pages? Or are they just going to your website and then bouncing right off, right? So Google Google monitors that, and that, that's a ranking factor. And that kind of rolls into the next bullet point is time on page. If people are going to your website and kind of hanging out, then that, that tells Google, like, all right, these, this, there must be some useful information here. They're reading the content. They're clicking around. Um, you know, the, it'll make you be seen as an authority and not just some, like, you know, rinky-dink website that only has a little bit of, content on it and you're not really providing the user what they what they need. So and that ties into the bounce rate, right? Like if the bounce if people are just landing and, and leaving, then it's that's not that's not good. And also the number of citations, reviews, and relevant links, right? Remember we talked about a link is not all links were created are created equal, right? If you have a, a relevant link, like if, if it's a relevant you know, restoration blog, for example, linking over to your restoration site, Google's crawling both sites, right, to see that, and you get more, you know, authority and page rank and, and all that good stuff transferring over through that link. Um, and then, you know, the, the reviews and citations, especially from the Google My Business stuff, the number of citations you have and consistent citations, right, like name, address, phone number, you want it to be consistent across all those profiles, and that'll help tremendously with your Google My Business rankings. Um, you know, a lot of clients don't even, you know, because I had a call the other day with, the, with an owner, and he thought he was doing pretty well, but we couldn't figure out why he wasn't ranking. So we, we took a look at his citations, and sure enough, his citations were all over the place. Um, you know, this name here, you know, had LLC on the end over here. The area code was different here. and I mean, you just don't want that, right? You want a clean, consistent profile across all your directory listings and citations. 
And that way, if you think about it, it makes sense because it makes Google bot easier to see like, all right, I see where this company is located. I see all these relevant links they have. Their name is consistent. You know, why don't we give them SEO points for, um, you know, for lack of a better word. <laughs> but so a little bit more into the, you know, what you guys, you know, I would, I would keep what I'd be focusing on from a new SEO formula perspective. You know, everybody knows like, you know, water damage, water damage restoration, mold removal, but there's a lot of high margin keywords that you can go in, that you could be going after outside of the box um, that can lead to some big money jobs. Um, and so if you actually pay attention and think about that and go after them, you'd be going after a lot of keywords that your competitors are not going after. And it's, you know, we call it low hanging fruit, right? It's, it, you can get faster rankings, which ultimately the whole point of all of this is to get more leads and more business, right? So all, all this is a means to it. Um, so, so keep that in mind when you're going after your, you know, when you're putting your strategy together and you're putting your SEO strategy together. Um, remember, you want to have a website built to convert. You want to have unique pages targeting these, those keywords. And you want to have service pages and city pages, right? Specific. To that service for that city um, because that if you you know we're not we won't do it now but if you go into like you know once we get off here if you go into the do a, do a quick search and you'll see if you did like water damage restoration you know your city look at the top 10 and the organic and you'll see that a lot of them will have a dedic a dedic designated page for water damage in that city those will tend to show up more than just a generic water damage page, not going up that particular city. So that's why we set up, you know, service pages for our client and city pages for our client to go after that. You want to give Google what it wants, right? That's what's showing in the search results. Then that's basically why we reverse engineer um, what we can visibly, you know, there's, there's some things you got reverse engineer that you can see you know, to the eye. There's also some back end stuff that you can reverse engineer as well. But, but keep that in mind as you're building out your sites. And again, as you're choosing your keywords to go after. And, you know, keep the user experience in mind. Like, do you have a, a, a cool video that kind of explains your company and what you do? You might want to leverage that on your site, right? To provide a user experience. And that'll help with your time on page on the site, right? To keep people engaged, clicking around. And it won't just look like some cookie cutter website with stock photos um, that a lot of, you know, people are using. And that's, that's not going to lead to a good user experience, right? If you have personalized photos, People are going to recognize that. They're going to click around more. Like, hey, this is a, a real, real company. So that's obviously going to lead to a better user experience. And you obviously want to take care of your on-page optimization. You want to have some kind of linking from you know some of your pages on your site, linking from one page to another, with some good anchor text going from the, you know with those links. You know your meta tags, your meta descriptions, your your headers, your title tags, all that good stuff. All the on-page, you want to make sure it's taken care of based on whatever page you're working on. So obviously, I mean, this might seem obvious, but just, you know, if you if you got a mold removal page, you want to make sure that whole page is optimized around mold removal. You don't want to keyword stuff it, but you want to make sure that you have some anchor text and linking strategy, you know, mold remediation, mold removal. Um, you know, you can talk about mold testing a little bit, mold inspections. Um, but you just want to make sure all that's cleaned up and optimized. And you want to build your authority to your website with off-site optimization, which we'll talk a little bit about here in a little bit. But you know, long to keep it short and sweet, you want to have relevant links, right? So just keep that in mind. It's from off off-site optimization. And then you want to track your results, right? If you're not tracking your ranking or where your leads are coming from or where your business is coming from, then you're kind of just flying blind, right? So you don't we don't ever want that. So so just keep that in mind and whatever you're doing, make sure you're make sure you track it. So I know I've kind of been ranting and raving for a little bit. So, I mean, is there anything that, like I shared so far, that you guys didn't know um, from a ranking perspective? You know, I've been hearing about the site speed a lot. A lot of people lately have been like, man, I had no idea about the site speed. I know it's been a big one lately. But y'all can put in the chat, bo chat box if you want. Did y'all, you know, is there anything that you didn't know um, before that I just shared with you that, you, you know, you're going to go back and take a look and make sure, um, like, you, you have it on point? So put something in the chat box if you want real quick. I'm going to take a sip of water. All right, we'll continue on.
so here's you know this isn't a an all comprehensive list but this is a good chunk and i just want to get, get you guys thinking outside the box a little bit these are just some of the more common water mold fire keywords that you guys should be going after but you know everybody's going after water damage water damage company like i mean as you should and i have over here to the right to keep this in mind like you know, Google can know where you're searching from on your phone, but you also, people still type in the city names as well, right? And from a desktop computer, like some of the older um, demographics still do, right? Because we can monitor that and, and watch all that. So you want to make, you want to go after these keywords as is, but you also want to go after these keywords with all of the suburbs and surrounding cities you guys cover, right? Like I'm, I'm assuming most of you cover, I mean, even if you're in a smaller town, there's going to be some smaller towns around your small town that you cover. So you want to go after these keywords in addition with the city, uh, city name after it. But I do want to point out too a few of these keywords that, you know, you, you guys like the near me and see the thing is too, all of these keywords you can put near me at, like I said, I only got so much room in the slide, right? So I can't have a thousand keywords listed here um, for obvious reasons, but so keep this in mind, like the near me, for example, right? What do, pe do people tend to put near me, even on the desktop? Because if somebody has to drive somewhere, like they want a water damage company close to them, they're going to put water damage company near me or mold remediation contractor near me. So all these keywords you can put near me after it, and that would be a whole other keyword string that you can go after and show up in the search results. Obviously, again, to get them to your website, to get them to call you to get the business. Again, that's the point to to all of this so keep that in mind that's a lot of <coughs> oh blessing man excuse me nope it came out of nowhere but i'm good all right so the so keep that in mind the near me you can add that to any of these keywords here right and then i also want to see this is a huge one and i and so we track the call recordings um so we can see where all you know all the business our clients are getting we can see where it's coming from and this is one this is some gold right here because I've listened to some huge jobs come through. But people type in, like some people just, as you see it over here, flooded house, okay? Some people just type in, but who to call for flooded house? And if they type in who to call, they're looking to make the phone call, right? They're not researching, they're not shopping, they're trying, their house is flooded, they're trying to get somebody out there. So that whole who to call phrase, I mean, you could put that with any of these keywords, I'm telling you, it's a money. That's money in the bank, right? I mean, that's again. I know I keep referring to that, but again, I'm, you know, with my background in construction, like I don't, you know, all this is a means in the end. You want more jobs. You want more revenue for your company. Point blank. It's, it's the only reason all this digital stuff even matters in my mind. Um, maybe you disagree, but more traffic, more phone calls, more business. That's why we try. We try to keep it simple. And that's why if you put who to call, that person's looking. That's a high intent, what we call a high intent keyword. So just like the near me with the who to call, you can put out any of these keywords. Who to call for flooded carpet. I mean, that's, a, that's another. So flooded carpet, you might think like, oh, uh, like a carpet cleaning might come in, but like I've heard guys get nice three, four, five thousand dollar dry out jobs because their carpet's flooded. But you know, then the the, the drywall sucked up water. I mean, it turns into a nice little water damage job, right? Like that's thinking outside of the box keyword right there. Flooded carpet. Not a lot of companies go after these keywords, even in the in the paid ads world, right? Like everybody's trying to go after water damage restoration, seventy five dollars a click. I mean, if you go after who to call for flooded carpet, it might be ten dollars. Right, so I mean, there's so many strategies. I can talk about this all day, probably, um, but I'm not gonna do that. I know we gotta keep it short and sweet, sweet. But one more too, another good one because I've heard it. Toilet overflowing, money keyword. I mean, and a lot of these are uh, a plumber might need to be involved as well, right? Like somebody's toilet's overflowing. Yeah, they need a plumber to come, a plumber to come fix the toilet and all that. But when the plumber gets out there, I mean, who, who's he gonna call, right? He's gonna call his buddy Bob down the street and get you know four or five hundred dollar referral fee. Bob gets the gets the restoration job. So if you're smart about it too, you can go after some of these keywords. And you know when they call, like yes, no problem, Bob. will you know I got a technician on my way, and I tell you what, I'm gonna call my friend Joe. He's a plumber as well. He's gonna come out as well. 
like you can be that first call. Like for example, we just the other day we went after a plumbing. Well, this is kind of getting on a tangent, but I'm gonna say anyway because it's, it's similar to this. Like thinking outside of the box is what ultimately what you need to do. Is we were testing this in some paid ads on our clients. The first call he got, emergency. They were looking for emergency plumber. It was a hotel job. Hotel flooded out. It turned into. Um, he's actually not done with the drought yet, but I texted him the other day, and he uh, that might have been one of the texts I sent you earlier. He thinks it's going to be a fifteen thousand dollar mitigation job, just based on the keyword that it's not a normal restoration keyword. But we were, we're testing it for him. First call he got. Um, turn into a fifteen thousand dollar drought. I mean, you know, the seventy percent margin or whatever it is. You know, it's, I mean, that's uh, we're pumped for them. I mean, that's super. So obviously, we're going to look into more of that strategy and try to roll it out. You know, we're just going to dive deeper down that that hole to see if we can't leverage even more of that, right? And he he's just like, look, I'll he goes, I'll find a plumber. I'm like, we'll figure it out. But like, man, he's um he's just pumped. So just think outside the box, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. And and think about combining. You know who to call near me. Um, you know emergency. You can put in it 24/7. I don't even have that on here, but you can put 24/7. But you can combine that with all these keywords with the cities, and I mean, there you go. There's 400 keywords right there. You can be going after every time. So kind of went on a tangent there, but it's important. And and if you really pay attention to this stuff, it can be man, it can lead to some huge jobs. All right, so let's talk about the on-site optimization a little bit. So you want to, I mean, some of this might seem obvious, some of it might not, but you want a strong website, good, unique content, and a good user experience, right? You want to think about, like, if you ended up on this site, would you click around? Would you read it? You know, is there stuff to keep you engaged, like the videos? I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but the videos, you know, people, I mean, YouTube's getting a ton of traffic these days, right? People are just tired of reading, you know, people's attention span is negative 15 seconds now. Nobody can pay attention to anything. Um, but they, you know, they will click and listen and uh, watch a video. So keep that in mind as you're getting your uh, new sites built out. You want to have separate pages. You don't want to just have, I mean, I've seen it. Like uh, some of our clients come to us for with, you know, they can work with other companies, but they might just have one page and then might just have water, mold, fire on that home page, but then they don't have a separate water damage page, a separate mold page, a separate trauma cleanup page, a separate COVID page, a separate fire. I mean, you know, the list can go on, right? I mean, remodeling if you do that, but you want to have separate pages for those services. And then you also, you know, in addition to that, you want to have city pages, kind of like I touched on earlier. You know, you just don't, you, you can, like, and we do this for our clients too. You, you have your overall service area on your homepage, but then you want to break that down even further to have city pages for those particular cities, right? Like, so water damage restoration Orlando page. Um, and then you know, like water down. There's going to be suburbs around Orlando, right? So you want to you want to cover cover those as well. And then you want to have unique content. We kind of touched on that earlier. Um, and you do want to have. Oh, I just this heat map. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can't pull this up real quick. Um, and as far as unique content goes, I want to show you guys this real quick. Um, it might. I don't know how fast I can get it to load with I had something on here about unique content. I want to show you guys something. Because this is a this is an app we use on our clients' uh, sites for getting unique content. Man, this um, it's kind of hard to use for you guys. <laughs> For you guys to see, but I'm trying to do best I can real quick. But so you can see this heat map. Um, so these are jobs this client's doing, you know, all over Phoenix. Um, this is like a little heat map that our app has that he can he can do. But why I want to show you this is we can I'll move this over here. So all these are different cities that he's doing um, jobs in, right, around Phoenix. So we're creating these city pages for them as we go. And then from a unique content perspective, his, his technicians are doing this from their phones on the app, right? So it's pretty sweet. sweet. So, so Google's picking up the location data on these phones, right? And we're getting location geo-specific ranking points in Google's mind. But also, 
as you can see, so here's a pack out they're doing in Avondale. And so this, uh, this is our city page for Avondale, right? So as you can see, we're getting multimedia pictures. We're getting an address tag. We're getting a pack. We're getting keywords in this description. And we're getting all this pushed on a consistent basis to these city pages for fresh new content. And people can see like, oh man, look, I need my, um, I mean, this, this client, this is a full service construction company. They do restoration. They have restoration division. They have a remodeling division. I mean, they're a larger company. Um, so that's why they're doing drywall here. You know, some of you guys might not do the putbacks, and that's fine. But some of you might. Um, but as you can see, like, if I was a prospect, I'd be like, damn, this is pretty sweet. Um, you know, look, I can see them. I can see them doing the whole process on this, uh, you know, on drywall repairs. So we're getting keywords in here, fresh content geotag specific to that city and so it all just builds on itself and i know this this webinar is not about reviews but from the same app the tech can say hey you know debbie if you like the drywall we just repaired if you think it looks good if you don't mind leave me a five-star review on google i'd appreciate it so from the from the same app the technician can, can do a review request and again a review is a ranking signal so you guys obviously want to be getting more reviews from a google maps perspective perspective that is so this, this app is kind of a one-two punch, right? So, you know, whoever you're working with, you want to make sure you're getting fresh, new, relevant content on a specific basis. And in this instance, we just happen to be pushing it to, to the city pages for this client. And we're going to build them out more and more around Phoenix as they do more and more jobs over time, right? It's pretty slick. Um, and, and obviously, we're just giving Google what they want. So I did want to show you guys that. Um, real quick that, that heat map right here reminded me of it so and then you want to have you know the keyword and the title and the h1 tag and, and then the content a little bit you don't want to stuff it but you want it to be on there obviously right you want the keyword and the title in the header on the um you know in the header the h1 h2 h3 and on and on right and the meta description so you know when there's so Google will show the title, right? When you do a search, there'll be the 10 listings or whatever, and then there'll be a meta description below that saying what that page is about. Well, you want to convince, remember we, we, we talked about this earlier, one of the, the factors of the user experience and ranking is the click-through rate. Well, what's going to determine if somebody clicks or not is your copy, right? You kind of got to sell the click in the title and in the description, right? So you not only want the keywords in there to, to prove it's relevant, you want to sell the click, and describe why they should come to your site versus somebody else. I mean, you could, you might, this is, I'm making this up, but some of our clients do this. Like, if, you, if you'll pay up to $500 of their insurance deductible, you could put that. Everybody loves a deal, right? They want 10% off or 500 off, whatever. So that would be a way that you could put that in the meta description, like, you know, 10% off your mold removal job or you know 10 percent off your environmental assessment or whatever the case may be you can put that in the meta description sell the click and then obviously it all builds from seo perspective um your name address phone number you want that in the footer on your site because again remember we're connect your website is linking your google my business profile which has a name address phone number and again remember all these citations that you know you're building out over the web or hopefully somebody you know you're doing it or your the marketing company you're currently working with is doing it is building out these citations and directing your listings for you and you want the consistent name address phone number and all those listings and then you also want it on your website right and that way google can see all that connecting together and they like the consistency and it'll build your authority and then you want to have like you know you want to be doing a monthly blog post or you know, press release or something and syndicating that out across the web. And I mean, that's kind of more of an off page play, but we'll, uh, we're about to talk about that next. And then obviously, you know, the page speed, right? Make sure your page speed is good for, for desktop and mobile. So here's a few off page things. I mean, this might seem obvious, but I've, I've seen it where it's not. If you know, you want to make sure you, you claim and verify your Google My Business listing, and then you want to optimize it. You know, fully fill it out, fully fill it out to have you know a lot of pictures in there. I mean, you almost got to treat your Google My Business listing as its own website. I mean, it kind of is. Um. So, 
you know, have a lot of pictures. You can put videos on there. You want to have all your services listed. You want to have a, a good lengthy description in there. You know, have your phone number on there, your address. Um, I would treat it as its own entity, its own website. Uh, I mean, because it, it kind of is, right? It's separate than your website and it ranks. Um, I mean, I treat it as an asset, right? It, it provides revenue for your business. Um, so I'd, I'd take it seriously and, and really try to optimize it. You want to get a lot of citations across the web to not, I mean, not only to help boost your Google My Business listing, but you know, that's a, those will be relevant links with name, address, phone number, pointing back to your website as well. So build a uh, page authority and website authority for your website itself. You want to be getting um, online reviews. There's a lot of different apps out there these days to do it. We want to make sure you keep on getting online reviews. And I mean, that to me, that's a, a huge conversion aspect. Like before I call, um, if I don't know somebody from just my town locally and I don't get a referral, an electrician, for example, I go to the three pack, look at the reviews real quick, and then make the call. So I think I'm putting, we're putting a lot of emphasis on reviews, and I'm sure some of you guys on here can relate that you look at re reviews as well before you you make a, um, a buying decision, especially in the home services industry. Um, and you want to have a way to build authorita authoritative links, and we kind of talked on a lot. And then you want to have a strategic way to syndicate your content out. Like once you have that content, you can syndicate it out across the web to really uh, boost things. So we'll we'll kind of get into that here. And you know, you, a year or two ago, you could kind of get away with just doing a simple blog post here and there, and which is good, right? Because you're getting fresh content. But there's you're only getting so many signals, and you're only getting so much power from that. So something that we've been doing. Now you guys could uh, could work on doing yourselves too. Is you know there's a way to where you can you can take these posts and really I mean blast it out and as a you know and syndicate it across a lot of different uh, properties and like basically you can do like a press release and syndicate it like on the Fox News Channel, ABC, and all that to build authority. And you can even embed your map your Google Maps listing into this blog post and then syndicate it out. So not only does that boost your Google My Business ranking, it, it has huge advantages to boosting your website rankings as well. So it's kind of a, a one-two punch. Um, and then, and there's kind of like a an acronym for this called EAT that that Google um, really wants to see on, on the website. So we'll kind of go into what that is here in a minute, a little bit further. But so when you're you know if you're doing these press releases you know instead of just doing a, a blog post on your website you can take that blog post and do a turn it into a press release and syndicate it out and then Google likes to see that because not only does it help you get hundreds of links quickly and these aren't spammy links because these are it's a high quality press release and it and it shows you you know E right so it stands for expertise authority and trust so I don't know if you can see it over here to the right that you know, from a local Google My Business, I mean, uh, the signals are, are number one as far, all of these are relevant, right? That's why I have a comprehensive approach to support it, right? As far from a ranking perspective. But the amount of signals you get is 25% from a local perspective, right? And then the, from the organic ranking, link signals are 27% with on-page signals right behind that. So, these press releases, and this is something we've rolled out not too long ago with our clients, I mean, are boost, huge. We're seeing a huge boost over time, especially. Because um, press releases, I don't know if you've ever noticed, they can lead to quick rankings. The biggest benefit is to give Google, Google these relevant signals they're looking for from an authoritative site, which would be ABC, Fox, um, CBC. And then, you know, that leads to trust, right? And then it builds up the page rank with the link signals that Google can obviously crawl and read all this. And so we're seeing huge jumps, um, you know, with these, with these press releases. So, and this, and this is from uh, part of, you know, Google's terms of services and some of the things they're looking for on, you know, overall uh, page quality and rating. And again, this is where, the EAT acronym came from, right? Expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Um, so they, I mean, they crawl and look at the main content quality, who's responsible for it. Like if you're, that's why like at first, it's always hard to start ranking, but once you become an authoritative 
author and site in your location, that's why it's easier to go after more and more keywords and those, you know, rank easier, right? Like it's, at first it's kind of hard to get going, but once you start crawling up the, the search engines, it's easier to bring up other keywords because you're already known as an authoritative figure in Google's mind, you know, in, in the cities you're already going after. So keep that in mind as you're, you know, you're putting your strategy together. So, here, you know, and there's a few other things too that are from a local aspect. So, you know, especially with the Google My Business stuff, it's extremely proximity based. You can't rank in a three pack 60 miles away, right? That's in Google. That's not the best user experience in Google Finds. So they're going to show local businesses close to that user um, in the three pack. So that's where the proximity uh, comes in, right? How close is the person to the actual place of business? Um, and that's where, you know, some of this, you can sync your map and you can embed that into the press release and syndicate it out. Um, it's just one strategy there to help, to help boost that. And you want to have, you know, relevance is like, that's why we said, if we have a, a water damage page specific to Orlando, that's going to be more relevant than just some generic water damage page, right? That's why if you search that, it's not going to show up some company in Texas because it's not relevant proximity based content right so it's like extremely important to keep that in mind as you do your link building strategy and as you build your uh, your websites out and as you do your blog posts or press releases whatever you you go after and you know what's your prominence in google's eyes right your your eat profile again the brand mentions the link signals how many reviews do you have versus the competition you know, I don't know if you noticed this, but if you if you snip around a three pack, especially too, you notice not always. Like it just depends, right? How long they've been around, how long they've been doing link building, and all that stuff. But the number of reviews can be huge. A lot of the guys in three pack tend to have more reviews than the guys ranking down 15, 20, and all that, right? They don't. Some of them don't even have any reviews. A lot of the guys against the top three pack, you know, they have a lot more. I mean, I've seen it where you know some of them they'll have you know, a hundred and something reviews and the next guy only has 10. So who do you think is going to get the call? That's why I think it's a huge conversion aspect. Like we're really pushing and, and helping our clients get more reviews. Cause I mean, it just helps, it helps get the phone call. And again, that's why, um, we want, we want to go after that. So, oh yeah, I did want to show you this guy real quick too. Like see how powerful, um, syndicating your content out, these press releases can be. Like what it could do, I'll just show you this. Uh, yeah, this was actually kind of cool. I was looking at this earlier. Um, hang on, we got some screen uh, <laughs> issue. Um, let's do this. So this is a client I can see here. Came on board December last year, right? Um, and that, you know, there's a lot of on page and all this stuff we've been talking about. And some of this we're still implementing, which I'll get to in a minute, but like, you know, we start fixing the, the on page and, and start doing the link building and the syndication. So look at this, this is crazy. And if you can see that he had one number one ranking and then all of these are, you know, two to five and all that. Right. So the dark green is the number one rankings. So look what's happened over time. In May, remember I was saying there's an update. Fifty, he had fifty number ones in May. When he came to us, he had one. So I know this sounds like a lot of who you know, just gibberish. It's not really important <laughs> and technical. I mean, that's why companies like us just just handle it here, guys. Right? So you don't have to worry about all this. But I mean, I just want to show you how powerful the off-page SEO, especially, can be. Fifty number ones. Now look at this. He a few of them dropped down to number two and five, which isn't. I mean, if you went from number one to number two, it's fine, right? That that's why this is this is an ever going battle. Google did an update, right? So he lost a few, but guess what we're working on now? We're about to do his page. We noticed his page speed is bad. Um, I think he was even in the red. So we're about to take. I mean, once we do his page speed, he's he's probably gonna jump past the fifty and probably you know he'll, he'll probably jump up to sixty, seventy five number one rankings after that. So, I mean, it does fluctuate, right? That's the nature of the game. It's not just a consistent, um, I mean, Google doesn't make it easy as long as, but I just want to show you the power. I mean, you know, one number one to 50 by implementing all these things, right? So I'm not just, um, 
making this stuff this stuff up as I go. Um, man, this is crazy. If you look now, look at all these number one rankings for, and all these are showing for the, you know, some of these are the outside of the box, and some of these are big boy keywords, right? Like just water damage. Everybody's trying to get that. Um, but as you can see, I mean, we're almost, I mean, we almost have him number one for all these keywords, right? So I'm pumped for him. Uh, I was talking to him the other day. He's super excited. But uh, I just want to show you that. You know, this is, there's, there's definitely power to what I'm showing you guys. Um, not just, uh, you know, we, we like to implement what, what we, uh, what works, obviously, right? So this, this is the stuff that's working now. So hopefully you guys are getting something, uh, from this web webinar and you'll be able to get out there and get it done. Um, you know, once it's over. So I just want to show you that. So just to kind of summarize some of it real quick, I know I've kind of run through a lot of this, you know, get your on page, right? You know, have your service pages, your city pages, make sure your title tags are right, your meta descriptions, your H1s, your URL strings, or, you know, you want your keywords and your URLs, your images. You want some, so make sure you got all that stuff covered, your unique content, your Google My Business, make sure you got all your, all that claimed, optimized, get all your citations cleaned up, your name, address, phone number, get all that submitted and cleaned up to you know you can use um there's a bunch of data aggregators out there too you can use as well um and then you want to consistently get more and more citations too because that's you know the fresh content and google can see that they'll be able to pick up on those signals you know i would uh, recommend doing a, a blog post and then syndicating that out you know via a signal engine kind of like what i showed you well i showed you how powerful it is um well, i mean with our client right he wasn't, uh, the old company he was working with wasn't implementing that. And as you can see, he had one number one ranking um, to now having 50 number one rankings. Just from that, I mean, that's um, that's crazy. Uh, and as I can show you, basically, I mean, there's still like, you know, a ton of other keywords we can get him ranked for, right? And I showed you all the different combinations you can do earlier. So what we do with our clients is we get on number one there, we try to hold that position, and then we try to go after more keywords to get them to number one. I mean, I, we know like, once you get number one, you better believe it. Somebody's going to take you out. Like this isn't, you can't just sit and forget it. Like, cause whenever we get a new client, that's how we look at it. Like whoever is above them, like we're coming for you. Um, that's just, <laughs> that's just the way we, I mean, it's, that's our job, right? Take care of our clients and get them ranking and, and then hold that position. Um, so just make sure that, you know, who, whoever you're working with or whatever, or even if you do it on your own, just make sure you're, you're doing that. It's extremely powerful right now. And it's a safe long-term um, way to build authority and trust and expertise, um, you know, around your brand, around your website. So, all right. So, I mean, I kind of touched on this, but, you know, just to take an even lot higher view, remember a good website with pages, you know, get your, city pages set up with geo modifiers in there so like you know water damage orlando you want all that on your orlando page you want unique content you want to leverage multimedia to enhance your time on page and reduce your bounce rate we talked about that some engaging pictures engaging videos um but again the caveat to that is don't be loading up your website with these heavy high pixel videos and because you're going to slow your site speed down right that's why it's important to be thinking of this from mind get get Reviews are so important. Make sure you have a review strategy in place um, to push some reviews to your website as well as to your Google My Business. Load up your citations, get all those cleaned up, consistent, and then have a you know consistent process in place to get more and more citations. Post updated contents and you know build links of authority. And then something you can do as well is you know leverage paid search to identify high converting keywords, right? So some of those keywords I was showing you guys earlier, the only reason I know that is, I mean, you know, I've been doing this for years and we've run hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of paid ads, right, by this point. So if you look at that data, that's how we've been like, whoa, wait a minute, what's this keyword? Who to call for flooded basement? And then we can follow that call all the way through to our clients. Oh man, David got a $10,000 basement job from that. That might be a keyword you want to go after, right? Um, and, and, P, and uh, paid search allows you to, to do that quickly to see the keywords that are working and converting. So, 
I know I've kind of run through a lot. That's kind of it. Um, is there anything that I mentioned to you guys? You know, put in the chat box over here. Is there anything that we kind of went over today that you didn't, that you noticed you're not doing or something that you're going to do moving forward? Um, you know, put it into the, in the chat box and we can see. Um, I don't even know if I have the chat box here. Um, but look, I, so yeah, put that in the chat box as I, as I look for it. You know, you can put a let's talk in the comments too. Like a lot of times, like when I do these, a lot of guys reach out, a lot of guys and girls reach out to me after that. They're like, look, man, we don't, we don't, we're not happy with our current marketing company. We're not ranking anywhere. We're not getting any business. Or if you're just too busy to implement this yourself, like we, I have found most of our clients, you know, doing multiple seven figures, not one of them can run a seven figure business and implement all this on their own. So we're like, look, Jamie, you just deal this for us. We're going to focus on systemizing our business, hiring more techs, getting more trucks, et cetera. You just take care of all this for us. So, um, you know, I will do a free SEO review. You know, some of you I've talked to before, some of you I haven't, but you know, if you, well, I'm doing the strategy calls right now too. So it'll be me on the call. So I can uh, do a deep dive on your website, your SEO. We can take a look at kind of what, you know, what you're doing is working and what you're doing that might need to be fixed to where you can go from like Robert did the, the one number one ranking to, to 50. Um, and it's, and, I mean, we're just getting started too. I mean, six months, that's not even, man, I'm pumped for him. I mean, in the SEO world, that's not that long. So we're, we're going to make sure he dominates. Um, so if you want to, you can call this number and uh, I think that'll go to our um, automated system, but then press two and you can talk to Simon. He's my assistant. He, he'll uh, help get you on my calendar um, and we can talk. But yeah, I'll, I'll do a free review for you guys for hopping on today. Appreciate your time. And we can kind of see uh, what, I mean, maybe you got all this, you're rocking and rolling and you're dominating already. Um, but if not, you know, we can maybe look at some strategies that you can implement. Um, and I'll put this link to my calendar. If you don't want to call, it looks like some of you want me to reach. I'll put this, uh, yeah, hang on one second. I'll give you, um, uh, this way you can, I don't know where. Yeah, there's the link. Um, so it looks like one, one of you asked for the link. Yeah, there you go. So, if, so my calendar is on this page. If you just want to book a call um, right now while you're on your phone or computer, you can uh, book a time on this calendar. There's a calendar on this page that you can book a time with me is what I'm saying. Or you can call the number on the screen. Um, be more than happy to, to talk with you guys and see if we can help. Hope you guys enjoyed it today. That's um, about all I have. Do you have any questions for me real quick? You put those into the chat box. Again, thanks for your time. Hopefully everybody's staying safe and healthy out there and uh, still still doing some work. And um, I think, you know, most of the companies and clients we've talked to across the country, I think most places are starting to open back up this whole corona situation. Um, and some of you might have been doing a little corona disinfecting now, right? To make a little revenue and to help out people at the same time. It's not a bad, not a bad setup. So, um, Appreciate everybody's time. Anybody have any questions or anything? Put them in the chat box and we can, um, I'll hang out for a few minutes. Looks like we've been here for about an hour, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, all right, well, we'll uh, wrap it up for there. Let's see, David. Yeah, David, if you want our help to do all this for you, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, just call our office, hit two to talk to Simon, and he'll, he'll put you on my calendar. Or just click that link I put in the chat box right here. You can, um, you can sign up with us. Yeah. No, yeah, awesome. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome, uh, Mary. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the feedback too. You're welcome. Yep. Glad you enjoyed it. Cool. All right. We'll wrap it up there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Got some good info from it. Hope everybody's safe, healthy. 
still doing business, you know, obviously make sure your employees, customers, family, everybody's safe. Um, and uh, we'll talk soon. We'll probably, we'll probably do another one next month. So uh, stay tuned. Be a lookout, you know, on social media and your emails um, for an invite. And uh, hopefully I can talk to you guys soon. And uh, hopefully everybody keeps crushing it from an SEO perspective. All right. Thanks, guys.